Hello YouTube friends. Today I want to talk about how to customize the OPZ with your own samples. So not only the drum sample tracks but also the melody tracks. And I will go over everything you need to know. So first off the, the, the easy ones and that's like the drum slash sample tracks. So for example we have the kick track. I loaded up two kick kits from my uh, soon to be released 909 sample kit. So this is like a clean. It's like a clean 909 kick kit and a processed one. So basically how you make them is through an, an app called OP1 Drum Utility and I will put it in the link below where you can download it, it's free and you can just uh, drag and drop samples in it and it creates the correct AIF file uh, for you to import into the OPZ. Yeah, the only limit you have is that it that one kit needs to only have 24 slots and it needs to be less or equal to 12 seconds in total, so you can't exceed that. The way you put it on the OPZ is to mount the OPZ to the computer in a content mode and you do that by pressing the track button and power it on and then your computer will recognize it just as an external drive and you can just drag and drop your stuff in it. Uh, there are lots of videos out there uh, describing that. So basically you can just fill all your sample drums tracks with all your custom samples. Okay, and now on to the melody tracks. The way you create the correct sample for that is to, or the correct AIF file to put on the OPZ so it recognizes it. You have to make a six second sample of something and create like a mono 44.1 kilohertz AIF file and if you're using Audition like I do Adobe Audition then you have to uncheck the check mark uh, which adds markers and stuff and then there's a website which I will link uh, below and put on the screen now that will actually convert that AIF file with the correct markers in it or extra metadata I don't know exactly Exactly what it does and you can put it on the OPZ that way. It is not without quirks now at this moment with this firmware because yeah it randomly uh, decides to not show a sample anymore because the last time I turned it on I had also a base sample in the slot null and as you can see now it's gone so it still does weird stuff and in the court I had like four chord patches and the last one is now gone I don't know where it is so it still has its quirks and I haven't figured out yet what causes that I hope they will fix that in a future firmware okay now how to use them uh, let's uh, begin with the, the melody tracks if you have the sample for the first time playing it will sound something like this because the envelope is really short something like that and yeah you have to adjust it to taste straight from the back but yeah now I'm having a, this is a sample of my cork monopoly which has sampled and yeah I can now play chords with that so it's that easy and I have all the other parameters to play with. So we've got the filter. And I actually don't know what these P1 and P2 do. So let's make a chord. This is kind of like a bit crusher or something. And what's the second do? It's 
second still does nothing, hopefully in the future. That's kind of cool, let's put an LFO on it. Depth. In combination with the filter, it could be cool. Okay, and in some of my playing around with the, with this patch, you already hear that the six second length is finite on the sample. So every sample or the, the standard sample you put into it is six seconds long. And if you go higher, it will play it faster, so... So then this, the, the playing time will be shorter as well. There's no way to loop this synth sampler yet. I hope they will uh, make that available in the future, because that would be really cool. But one way to work around this is by doing the old sampler trick uh, from the 80s when they had like one second or two seconds of sampling time. And what they did back then is just make like a really high pitched sound. They would sample like a s short bit of it and then play it back uh, in a lower octave so you can put more content into into smaller sample size and you basically can do the same with this if you sample six seconds of a really high note and then play it back two octaves it will become what is it 24 seconds because it's like six seconds divided by two or times two is 12 seconds times two is 24 seconds so you, you have a more range to play with and i basically did this by This and this are actually the same sample. So yeah, if I play now a chord here. This is actually from the same sample I sampled from the Monopoly, except that it has is two octaves higher. So if I do this one is the same as as that. And but you hear it sounds different because that's because you're transposing it down on the keyboard. But this is done really quickly. And the other one if I transpose it down You have much longer playtime. So yeah, that's basically a trick that I would use a lot if I want to make pads. Then you then you have more time to play with sample time, and you can also hear like the artifacts of transposing it down. That's where the character of the sampler comes into play. You hear that little edge? It's aliasing, I guess you call it. And you can really play with this technique to get extra character to sounds who would normally sound really standard. So if you will sample like a really high note into it and then just 
transpose it all the way down and then see what you get. Maybe play with the filter a little bit to get rid of the excess harsh tones from the aliasing. But yeah, now I have a Cork Monopoly sampled into the OPZ. Okay, and now let's see what we can do with the uh, with the other sample tracks, the drum and the, um, the drum sample tracks. So yeah, what you can do with um, with the sample is, of course, with P1 is the pitch, and P2 is if it's for uh, if it's playing back forward or backward. Um, we'll discuss these parameters later, because I want to. Yeah, and here is like a sample pack. I got from the PPG wave wavetables so there are some let's see uh, if we can play with this a little bit because for example we can change the note style to retrick gate or loop so basically retrick it just plays the whole sample from start to finish if we do gate it will play back the amount or the length that you press the note or short so and the other one is loop so then we have basically a looping sample so so we can and it finishes the Okay, so this is like a really interesting way of making weird. So if you have the loop turned on, the envelope will have some interesting looping features. So you have like the sample start and then the fade in and the fade out and the whole time. So you can actually change the, um, the looping of the sample. Mm. 
So, yeah, you have to prepare your samples a bit for that. Because this is... This is actually the same sample. As this one only, with this one I chopped off the, the attack, so it potentially would look better. Here you have the rum. Potentially you can make really cool textures with this and even uh, melodies, let me see. So basically you can, you can make melodies like just put random tricks and then you can just parameter locking different steps. Yeah, because I also have like a bass track or bass samples here. Let's see how... But that works in the same manner, I guess, because... Yeah, let's see how that sounds right from the top. So basically this is a drum sample and then now I have it on retrick but yeah you can also make bass melodies like this with sampled bass samples. change between them on the fly.
so yeah, really cool possibilities of customizing your OPZ with your own samples. Yeah, I'm going to play with this a lot more and hopefully Teenage Engineering will expand the sampling capabilities, especially in the, um, in the melody section. Hopefully we can play with some looping functionality maybe, maybe in the same way as in the other ones. But yeah, it's already pretty useful. So I hope you found this helpful. If so, please give it a like. It really helps the channel. And I will see you in the next video. Peace.